Okay. It's interesting. Phil Collins is here. When I walked out, he... As I was enjoying your applause, it, it went through my mind. I wonder what it's like to stand up in front of, I don't know, 20, 50, 60,000 people who are all screaming. It must be quite an extraordinary feeling. Uh, Phil has a new CD out. It's a compilation of his biggest hits. He's going to be talking about his career. And uh, also the very talented wildlife artist, Mr. Robert Bateman, is with us. He's going to talk about his trip to Africa and his new children's book called Safari. And the daughter of one of the world's most famous and loved men, Diane Disney Miller, is going to discuss her dad, Walt Disney. All this in March, so don't you go away. He's been making music for about 30 years. He has won seven grandma, uh, Grammys or Grammys. He has over 36 chartered and number one singles, sold three million albums in this country alone. Uh, his latest CD is his 12th solo album. Somewhere in the research it said 200 million records worldwide. I'm sure that's out of date. That's probably 29 kabillion. Ladies and gentlemen, Phil Collins! What did you say? You lean over, you kiss me, you said, what, boat up? I, no, I said, what a build-up, I said. Oh, what a build-up. I must be such a disappointment now. <laughs> well, God hope we all stay awake <laughs> while you're here. <laughs> what day is it, Phil Collins? Oh, it's Friday. That's very but good. But I had to ask. Yeah, you had to ask back yeah. there. You've been running around the world a little bit. Yeah, I did. Uh, well, I was in New York three weeks ago, and then I would Paris and Holland and Germany and Spain and England. And I came from New York last night, and I'm going to Los Angeles ton tonight. So it's kind of... It... A bit... <laughs> no, but I'm all right. Don't worry. I'm just fine. Uh, is this all in, in order? <laughs> Sorry? You have this little nervous twitch. Yes. <laughs> is this all in honor of this? Phil Collins hits, or is another reason you've been jet-setting around the world? Just your common lifestyle? <laughs> of a night, I tend to uh, want to jet-set. No, I... This is for this, really. I mean, I'm going to Los Angeles for this. For Tarzan. Yeah, which is, I don't, I don't normally wear anything to do with things that I've done or doing, but because of this manic last three or four days, my luggage and I have been oh, no. distant partners. <laughs> they, got, they didn't miss the plane in London, oh. and by the time it got to New York... You weren't there. I was, yeah, I was kind of on my way here, and last night I arrived, and it was like, open your bag, right, we're leaving, bye, you know, so, <laughs> so I just put the first thing that I found... <laughs> So I do apologize for the cheap plug. It's not a cheap... Is this the first movie that you have scored? Well, I, didn't I've, you do another one? No, I've written songs for movies. I've written the end song for movies. Okay. Or performed them, anyway. I, mean, I, I wrote Against the Lodge, and I performed Separate Lives, and I performed Groovy Kind of Love. I didn't write those. But, um, no, I, I'm writing the five songs that are in this. But um, I'm not scoring it. Which is, but scoring is something that I want to get into. It's a logical progression for a musician, if you can write music, to put music to an image. You know, it's fantastically evocative. Fantastically evocative? Evocative. You can make people cry, laugh, frightened. You know, it's true. I often look at movies and the thought goes through my mind, you know, without the sound, without, without the music, you just lose so much. I can't remember... Oh, I know what it was. I was looking into surround sound. And so more of the budget in the B is put into the sound part mm -hmm. of it than it is to the actual picture. Most of us miss a lot of that. Yeah. Well, I know John Williams, you know, I, I mean, he does these concerts where he has the footage. He says, this is what the scene looks like before I wrote the music. And uh, they show the scene. And, of course, it's a bit flat, you know. Right. And then this is the scene with the music. You know, and it's suddenly everyone's going, it's a shock. <laughs> yeah, you know, but it's, it's very, it's, all, it's half of the picture. 
Do you um, read, write music? No. Yeah, I know you didn't win the drums because your notations of the drums were boom, boom, daddy, dum, dum, yeah, yeah. boom. Bish, 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 wah. Bish, bish, wah. Yeah. I like oh, that it's one. It's very embarrassing because when you're playing with 20 musicians, you know, and, and they all read, and uh, playing with a big band is impossible. You know, you can't remember it all. Oh, now I remember it. The, the, the new songs I have to chart out, but the old songs that we've been playing, I don't even look at the charts anymore, which is the best way to be, I think. But um, I have to just write it out in a way that I understand it. And of course, the musicians gather around and laugh. Hey, look what Phil's doing. Look at me. Pretty funny. <laughs> Yeah. Bish, bish, do uh, what yeah. Is that what you're doing for Tarzan when you do the songs, or do you just... Uh... No, that's all from he memory, you know. That's the, all from memory? Yeah. God. I mean, I'd have to learn... I'd have to uh, go into the modern world of computers and technology and probably... probably learn some, somewhat to read and write if I'm going to write score music, because that's something that's far more complicated than just writing songs, you know. Sir George Martin was here the other day and he was telling me that he would encourage Paul to get into actual mm. the reading and being able to do that and uh, and he's actually taken the time to do it. I know yeah. you recorded one of the songs in his CD. but and George's, yeah. But I guess you're just too bloody busy, my dear, to sit down and learn how to... You're just too busy doing it. Well, no. In fact, when the guys... When my musical director, the, you know, the guy kind of tells the other musicians what to do, because I can't, um, he, he sort of looked at my stuff and said, you know, if you can, if you can read this... You'll read ordinary music. It's easier than the stuff you're writing. Oh, you probably... Oh, yeah, sure, hieroglyphics are... I guess you, to you they wouldn't be complex, but what are they? I mean, obviously for the drum it's boom, boom, dish, dish, but what do you do for the other? You write... What do you write? Well, you know, shut up. <laughs> yeah, four, count four and stop. <laughs> then count eight and start again. Play loud, play quiet. Oh, well, okay, which is pretty much what fortissimo and all those other yeah. things mean. They just use another language. Fortissimo. A fortissimo, I don't... <laughs> but I like shut up. Eight bars and shut up. Yeah. That's, that's very no, cool. No, literally, it's, it's stuff like that. But uh, it's just, it just all means something to me. When you go to do music um, for, for Disney or, or for any, any visual, do you, how do you do it? Do you like to... Uh, oh, you know what just flashed in my mind? I know what I remembered about you. You're the guy that has every... Everything on videotape, all your interviews and stuff. You've got it all. Well, I've kept it. Well, yeah, I remember that. We were talking about the last time I interviewed you. I, yes. got, a, I got a picture of you sitting watching this. No, 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 no. I never watch it. You're just keeping it for I, the grandchildren. So well, we yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's ah, one of, there I am. But, you know, we were just talking about this. Just talking about this. <laughs> just talking about this. Because it's like, why do you have photographs? Why do people take photographs? They take photographs because they may want to look at them in 15 years time and say, do you remember that holiday we had or whatever? Right. Or didn't you look funny with that, sh that shirt on, darling, you know? I mean, and I keep this stuff because it's there. That's the first thing. And also, my kids' kids might want to see it. You know, I don't, I don't keep it for me. I really don't. I, I, I mean, I've not watched any of it, but I always say when I finish, can you send me a copy of it? You must have millions of I have hours. dozens of interviews. <laughs> bazillions of them. Three or four. I would guess. Yeah, no, I just, you know, I just, I just keep them. I, one of my, Steve, my, one of my guys, you know, he kind of puts them all on one tape. And you've never looked at any of them? No, I don't look at them. He's probably putting new things in there. <laughs> You'll watch them and you go, what? Oh, what is that? Well, I'll check it out when I get back. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We're back with Phil Collins right after this. See your true colors. That's why. You were saying I was showing um, Phil the book of uh, Robert Bateman's uh, Safari, which is talking about the fact he'd never been to Africa. You say now you're starting to slow down a little bit. Yeah. I interpret that as meaning you're going to do a little more of the things that you that everybody have... else does. Yeah, like like well, relaxing. You know, I mean, there's a... I mean, I've never really been able to relax. I kind of, you know, there's always been something to do. I've always been busy, and now I uh, I enjoy sitting down reading, and I. Uh, you know, I love to write. I will always write songs and I'll 
if I write enough good songs, there'll be another album, and I'll do all. I know I'm still working, but uh, with, without being in Genesis now, of course, I have a bit more time to do to do nothing or to do something that else apart from music. And so traveling could be in that. But you know, for, for me, traveling means hotels, and that means yeah. almost like being on tour. So I've got to get away from that a little bit to want to go and visit a country for the sake of it. Do you get to spend much? You've been living in Switzerland for how long Four now? Years. Four years. Have you actually had a chance to be there that oh, much? Oh, yeah. 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 I'm there. I've been there more than I have anywhere else. I mean, that's my only home, too. So you've got a home now, a real home? Yeah. Well, I had a home, you know, in England. Right. <laughs> I had but a home she, in England. Yeah, but she got it. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, never mind. Well, I'm, not taking, I'm not taking that bait. Um, no, I... I I'm a one front door person. I like all my stuff in one place, you know, and, I, and so I don't have a house or a flat in Paris or New York or anywhere else, or London anymore. I just have this place in Switzerland. And um, I've lived there four years, and, and I've actually been there quite a lot, you know. I mean, certainly I've had more time off in this last four years than I have had before. I moved there and took five months off after the Both Sides tour when all that stuff was going on. I needed to learn, you know, learn how to speak French, I had, which I've started to. Oh, to be learned. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do actually, I, I, I'm far too embarrassed to speak it in front of people I don't know. But, um, no, I do... That, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, though, doesn't it? But I do, you know, I can, I can communicate with plumbers, electricians, and real, real life things, you know. How can I change this plug, you know? Or, I mean, just, I, I can speak very bad grammatical French, but it communicates, and that's really all I'm interested in. I didn't realize that there was so much French in Switzerland. I thought... Well, there's three areas. You know, there's German, Swiss German, Swiss French, and Swiss oh. Italian. Most people think of Switzerland as the German part. Right. With lederhosen, chocolate boxes, and cuckoo clocks. But yeah, yeah. the French part is actually very different, a very different mentality, and it's a bit like a France, but reliable. A bit like France, but reliable. <laughs> well, you know, the French are a bit, a bit like... Whereas the Swiss, you know, do that, but they're reliable. Right. Yeah. <laughs> As you'll do. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be very fine, is not the problem. Yeah. When you slow down now, and because you've had such um, an amazing time in life, I mean, there aren't too many people that get to enjoy the career you've had. I mean, you belong to this small group when you look around you. What do you when you get to look back at it, what do you think it is? is it, do you believe in luck, fate, destiny? Well, whenever, Hard work. Whenever we, whenever you talk about it, I just, I, I, I have to remind myself that it's me we're talking about because I, I don't. You know, I'm a drummer. I'm a drummer, and all I wanted to do was play the drums. And suddenly, well, not suddenly, over a period of twenty years, it's this, and I, I don't realize it sometimes. You I still have to think of yourself as just a, I'm just yes, a drummer. Yes, I do, and I, I really, I, huh. suddenly I, I get flashes of sort of. I suppose I have done a lot. I, su I suppose I have, and I, I've been very... I know I've been lucky, you know. Um, but uh, it's been an interesting time, you know. I mean, I've got to play with all my heroes, pretty much all my mm. heroes, apart from Lennon. I never played with Lennon. But um, I, a lot of my, the people that I grew up with, admiring from afar, you know. I mean, I was this legendary... I was in A Hard Day's Night, you know. I was one of the kids that was screaming at the Beatles in A Hard Day's Night. 20 years later, I'm up on stage with McCartney presenting him with an award, you know, and I said, he said, you were in Hard Day's Night, weren't you? I said, yeah. He remembers you? Oh, no, no, God, no. I told him I was in Oh, oh, you mean, whoa. <laughs> he remembers <laughs> me. <laughs> Qua? <laughs> uh, no, no, I mean... Oh, it's always about him, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but he'd heard, you know, that, that I was in Hard Day's Night. But, um... When they did, when it was 30 years after the, the making of that, they did a documentary on the making of The Hard Day's Night. Oh, wow. And Walter Shenson, the producer, asked me to narrate it. And he said, you were in it, weren't you? I said, well, I wasn't really in it. I was screaming at the kids, but I've seen friends of mine, but I've never seen me. And he said, well, we took some stuff out of the film. There was one song we cut out completely. Oh. And so they gave me the footage. They gave me all the outtakes. And I went through it frame by frame. Good there God, there I am. <laughs> and I found me at last, you know? It was wonderful, oh. yeah. Little guy in a white shirt, red tie. <laughs> Everybody was screaming. I was saying, shut up, listen to the band. <laughs> As, uh, I know you have a couple of kids and I have a couple Three of... Three kids. Three. One of each, in fact. Oh. No, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. I don't know the Dangerfield joke. I don't know who the third is, but Daddy didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have three... 
three kids, two adults really. I mean, 26, Jody's 26, Simon's 22, and Lily's nine. I have one of each, and I, I've never, I, you always debate as a parent whether or not you should like, you know, if you see your kids with talent, you want to kind of go this way. But your mum did that, did she? It was your mum no. who gave you that? Well, she didn't. She was too embarrassed think, because she was an agent. Yeah, she still is, you know, 85. She still does it. But she... She's an agent? She's a theatrical agent for kids. So was my mum. Well, but did she help you? Obviously not as much as your <laughs> mum helped you. And this is a problem we shall talk yeah, about yes, on I'm another program. <laughs> uh... but, but she she always thought that people would think that she... Would, was pushing me, so it worked in reverse. She didn't send me for things, she didn't push me because she was far too sensitive to be, you know, in case people thought that this is like a pushy stage mum. Right, right. So, you know, I got some jobs, but, um, you know, when my son's, a, my son is a musician, he's just signed a contract, record contract, he's doing his first album, be out next spring, and he, um, Simon that started the applause. Yeah. Uh, what a tough place for him to be, from my perception. My dad's Phil Collins. It's my first album. God, he sold how many cabillion? It's kind of. Or does he? Is he aware of that, or does he just not care and do I don't thing? believe that. I don't believe that he has that kind of pressure. I mean, obviously, when the light goes off, who knows? In the night, you know, who knows what goes through his mind when he mm. thinks, God, you know. But, I mean, it is very difficult, because obviously for every door that it opens, it means you have to be that much better when you get in the room. Yeah, you do. It you know? And so it is, it is difficult for him. But, uh, but Jolie is, is 26. She's an actress. She already... She's won an award in Canada right. for Best Leading Actress in a Soap, you know, which is Madison. That's so good, eh? And she did that all on her own. I mean, I'm so proud of her. And Lily... At nine is being nine years old. She's being nine years old. We're going to take a break. We're back with more with Phil Collins. <laughs> Who's with us because he's touring? The... How did you pick the ones for this, Phil? If they were hit, if they were hits, they're on it. <laughs> if they weren't hits, they're not. But you've had more hits than are on here. Well, you know, um, you're all they're globally. They're global. Well, no, no, oh, no, no, glo these are global hits. These are, well, there's. I mean, because you've got to have you know one record. You can't have a one record for Canada and America and one right, record right. for Europe. So you have to find records that were hits in all the necessary the big territories, the big countries. Um, no Genesis stuff's on there, you know, and I think if you take away the Genesis stuff, you'll find that most of my stuff, most of my stuff's on there. There's a few songs that were hits in America and Canada, but not in Europe, because they didn't come out in Europe, so they're not on there. Um, somebody told me that during this period of relaxing, you're into, you're into water skiing? You're yeah, like water a big ski. water skier? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, Arnold. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, um, no, I I love water skiing and I love snow skiing, and this is all this is all something I've discovered in the last four ah, years. I went barefoot water skiing, and if I'd known you, were, I would have brought you the tape because they didn't tell me what happens when you catch your toe at 80 miles an hour. And there's a lovely picture of me going slam on my face into the water. I'm amazed. Barefoot. Well, I yes. Well, the, the guy I didn't that say I, go, I was smart. I was brave. The guy that I go water skiing with. Uh, one of my best friends in Switzerland is a barefoot champion, and he. I mean, I don't do that. I, I'm two pieces of wood. Hey, I could show you I'm out. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, you know, it's like I quite. I dabble in barefoot. You know, that's hard stuff. It, well, yeah, but they had the the. Um, uh, the pole. The, yeah, this thing off the yeah. side of the board, the, or this yeah, board that you hang on to. But still, man. It's still, it's still tough. I, yeah, I, mean, I had bruised just... ribs for like a week. I was breathing yeah. funny. It's not, uh, it's not something that I think I will try. But you're doing two skis. Are you, like, one ski? Yeah, I, I, I'm, and... yeah I, I'm happiest on two. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, the rest of it's an effort. I, I, I've got a monoski and I, I, I can do it. But um, it's stress. It's stress. I like to just... I can... I can, you're well, I can water ski for about ten miles. Wow. On and, two skis. On two skis. And just stand there and... <laughs> you know, just look at the sweet scenery. I mean, that's what I enjoy. And snow skiing, have you tried snowboarding yeah. yet? No, no. Yes. Two bits of wood, sorry. See, I no, 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 I agree, I'm into the two, but I tried the one bit of wood and it's, it was very difficult. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't imagine sort of, my both feet on one thing in case, 
No, I, I'm, I'm too old for that. <laughs> Two bits of wood. How many people does it take to run your empire? How many people do you work <laughs> with? Well, you must. You do film, you do no, scoring. No, no, I've, your... I've got a manager who I've had a manager, dear old Tony, who's watching this now. Dear um, old Tony. No, we've been friends and he's my manager for the last 25 years. And I have Danny, who's my friend that lives in Switzerland with me, is kind of my assistant. I have my other friend Steve who's my production manager when we go on the road and do television shows and stuff these people have been working with me for many years you know and with me and for me and all that but I have a secretary in England and that's it just the four yeah there is no empire how many I'm not a businessman I'm not a businessman you're not a businessman I'm not a businessman I am a musician I'm not a businessman I, I trust my my fate with other people I'm not a businessman at all I don't do things for business reasons I'd have no I don't do things for money, never have done. If people want to pay me, that's fine. I do things where I pay to play. I've got, I, I, there's a, an artist called John Martin in, in, uh, in Europe. I paid for the studio time to play on his record because he couldn't afford it. So I, I, you know, I'm not a business, I'm not a business head at all. You, you are a? Drummer. Yeah, I was just going to say, you are a drummer. <laughs> yeah. The little drummer boy. That's it. Phil Collins. It's been a pleasure to see you again. I thank you for dropping by. I hope you find your luggage someday. <laughs> this is the CD. It's called Phil Collins Hits, and it is available in music stores. Come in. Canada's favorite wildlife artist, Robert Bateman, is next.